and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to figure out how to set up Lightroom so that with a single click, you can email your photos as attachments to different people. Now, it's going to take us a few minutes to set it up, but once we've done this one time, all it's going to take is a single click, and we can do it over and over again so we don't waste time in the future. So I'm looking at some images that I took a little while ago in Delray Beach, and I've decided that I want to email some of them to my client. So what I need to do before I export these images is actually select the ones that I want to email. So let's say, for example, that I want to send all eight of these images. I'll go ahead and select them here in the library module, and then click to export. Now, we can see over here on the left-hand side, there are some presets that ship by default with Lightroom. We could burn full-size JPEGs, which will go ahead and create the JPEGs. It'll export the JPEGs and then burn them to CD or DVD. We could export to DNG, and there is a preset here for email. So let's go ahead and start there. That makes sense. And then we will just modify this to our own needs. So where do we want to export our files to? Well, we can specify a folder, and what I've done is I've just created in my pictures folder, well, the pictures folder was already there, but I've created a subfolder in there, and in this case, my subfolder I want to be named uh, to email. All right, and if I wanted to save this in a different place, of course, all I need to do is click the choose and choose a different location. Since I'm going to email these, I don't really need Lightroom to keep track of them because Lightroom has the original images that I can go back to. The next area here, this file naming, I think I probably want to keep the files names the same, right? If I'm going to email these to a client and then they're going to order from them or refer back to them, I want the names to match between the ones that I emailed to them and the ones that I have in Lightroom. So I'm going to leave that alone. As for the file settings, I definitely want to change the format to JPEG if I'm going to email these, especially if the recipient has a slower connection. As for color space, that's up to you whether or not you want to leave it in something like Adobe RGB. It's a little bit larger of a color space, or if you want to bring it down to sRGB. sRGB is used on the web, but since I'm emailing these and I'm not necessarily going to use them on the web, I might leave them in the larger color space. A little, uh, a little tip about quality here. Of course, there's always a trade-off when saving JPEG files between quality and file size. So if I leave the quality at 100%, then my file size is going to be pretty large. If I just lower the quality down to about 90, I'm going to notice that my file size shrinks by about a third to maybe half of its original size. So I'm willing to give up a little bit of quality in order to significantly reduce my file size. All right, underneath the image sizing area, if I am going to email these, I probably want to resize them to fit. We've got a width and height option here, or look, I can go and say long edge. When I select long edge, now it doesn't matter if my images are horizontal or vertical. Whatever I put here as the pixel dimensions for the long edge, maybe 800 pixels or so, it will either make the vertical or horizontal image the longest dimension, 800 pixels. If I did have some small images, I could say don't enlarge, but I doubt that's going to be the case here since I'm starting with my original DNG files. We can choose to sharpen for output. This is an excellent option if I just want to apply a quick sharpening. If I know that my, my customer is going to see these on the screen, then I'd probably select that. If I knew they were going to print them or if I was shipping them off to be printed, then I might want to dial in for the specific paper that I'm going to. But in this case, I'm going to assume that my client's going to look at them on screen, and I'll apply the standard amount of sharpening. In order to get my file size down a, a little bit more, I can minimize the embedded metadata. That will still give me my copyright information on my file, but it will get rid of some other um, kind of extra data that the the person that's going to receive these emails probably really doesn't need. All right, finally, down here in the post-processing, this is where I'm going to actually add my email as an alias so that when Lightroom is finished exporting the files, it will automatically launch the email application, create a new email, and attach these photos. So in order to do that, I need to choose to go to the Export Actions folder now. That's the easiest way to arrive at this Export Actions folder. If we want to know the path, 
we can go ahead and look here. We can see here that um, this is my user. I'm in the library here in application support in Adobe, Lightroom, and Export Actions. But if you're like me, you really don't want to remember exactly that path. So all you do is you use the little export right here, go to Export Actions folder now. That automatically brings that up. So now all I need to do is I need to go and grab in my Applications folder my email client. In this case, I'm just going to use the Apple Mail client. I will right mouse click on it and just create an alias. Then I'm going to drag that alias inside this Export Actions folder. Now when we return back to Lightroom, you'll notice here that my mail alias appears on the list. So now that we have this all set up, we can go ahead and save this as a user preset. So I'll click Add, and this will be JK, and then Email. Click Create, and it's added to the list. And that's really it. We are now all set. If I choose Export, Lightroom is going to export these eight images to the folder that I told it to, in the format that I told it to, with the compression that I told it to, and when it's finished, it will go ahead and launch my email program, bringing up a new email and attaching all eight of these images to that email. And here we can see it. Now, depending on your email program, it might embed it right within your email, or it might go ahead and add it as an attachment. That depends on the email program that you're using. Well, that wraps up this episode of The Complete Picture. My name's Julianne Koss. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again right here on the Go